Hey, I'm back. It's Michael Ward for another conversation that is going to turn into a stand session, I'm sure, because I am so, so very excited to be talking about none other than the queen of hip hop soul, Mary J. Blige. Listen, y'all, Mary saved my life. Now, I know a lot of people say Mary J. Blige's music saved my life or she got me through a bad time. She helped me out through a lot of stuff. Y'all have heard the story, but y'all ain't heard my story. So I'm here to stand and tell y'all how Mary saved my life. I mean, it was a time in my life. I was like 12, 13, little black gay boy growing up in Jacksonville. And I had come out, pulled out, it's more like it. And I was devastated. Like I felt like nobody loved me. Nobody cared about me. Nobody understood me. I would often go home in my room, listen to music on repeat all the time. My first introduction, though, to Mary, I want to say was my sister. She had the My Life album, as you can see in the background, because it's the queen of hip-hop soul. Come on, and the hoodie. And, uh, <laughs> like, I was like, this woman cannot sing. I was like, she cannot sing. I don't get it. Why is she hollering? It doesn't make sense to me. And I was like 1994, so I had to be like maybe every bit of like in my teens. When my sister had the tape. I remember my sister wearing that thing out. And when the Mary album came out, mm, I remember there was this promo on TV and my sister was so geeked about it and excited. And there were people lined up. I want to say that it had to be in New York. It was like the Tower Records over there. I want to say that's what it was. And there were people lined up for like the release of this record. And I was like, why are people so geeked about this woman? I still don't understand it. I still don't get it. But baby, baby, baby. Let me explain to you. When I heard this record, and shout out to the guy who sold this to me. He hustled me. He hustled me in high school because you remember how y'all used to get them little penny CDs from Columbia House or Maxwell or wherever it was from? He got like 12 of them. And then he resold it to me for like $5. He took my lunch money. And I just, I was like, I guess I will give it a listen. And it was really the album cover because the scar and everything on it, as I'm, I'm looking at it right now, I was like, this just looks like this woman has been through a lot. I mean, it's got to be a reason why she's showing us this side of the face with the scar, which I still don't understand why she has the scar. Has anybody ever heard her tell the story? If you have, let me know, because I ain't heard it. And I'm so curious. But it was something about it. And I put this record on and I remember it was by the time I got to like Time, which is track number six um, with the Stevie Wonder sample on there, Pastime Paradise. And I was like, yo, this is deep. Like this is like this woman knows my life. Not even, I mean, deep inside all the rest of that, I was like, oh, yeah. But Tom is what solidified it for me because I'm like, wow. So I had to start backtracking and get back to the My Life album because I needed to hear more. And at that time, my heart was broken. I really didn't understand it until I got to the My Life record and I was like, yo. Yo, man, I'm crying, I'm here. I was heartbroken at that time and being a little black gay boy, not being able really to have nobody to talk to and say what was going on and identify the feelings and, and really have somebody that I could trust to, to say, listen, this dude made me feel some kind of way. Now, mind you, still in high school, like ninth to 10th grade possibly and didn't really have a community anybody at that time before i met my current best friend we've been friends like 20 years i know i say this all the time but shout out but before i met him i didn't have anybody except for my journals and as i said earlier i would go home and isolate myself in my room away from everybody and i would write i would write 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 in my journal this really sad poetry or write songs um and I was able to have a friend in music, somebody that let me know they knew my emotions, they knew my feelings, they knew what I was going through. So I stuck with it. And by the time that my life got really, really dark and really bad around 
14, 15, 16, all of that jumbled in, messed together. And I was thinking that the best thing for me to do was to check out. I definitely wanted to check out. Um, I just felt like there was nothing else to live for. My parents didn't like me. Uh, me and my sisters at that point were going through it. The world told me that what I was doing was wrong. Being gay was wrong. Everything that I was doing was wrong. Jesus didn't love me. The church don't respect me. I got it from everywhere except for music. So when Mary put out No More Drama 2001 with everything swirling going on in my life and I had tried to check out of here, it was like, this is, this is what I needed. This is the moment that I needed. I needed an album like No More Drama with like Forever No More um, with Testimony with just the title track, No More Drama, telling me that is what I don't want in my life. I don't want anybody tell me what I'm doing is wrong because I'm still here. I survived that and there's a fucking reason why I'm still here. So I just had to find that reason out. So those songs to me were a comfort and a friend with that record. I know, like I said, a lot of people tell y'all that Mary Save Your Life, that is my story. But think about all the incredible things that she's let us know throughout her career. I mean, from talking about her gay fans at a time when, you know, some women, especially, you know, in the industry and all the politics and the image and stuff like that would have kind of shied away from talking about HIV and AIDS. When asked during the Growing Pains era about her gay fans, she talks to Ernest Hardy of The Advocate magazine, and she says a few important things. So Mary says, the majority of my fans are gay. She says, matter of factly, the majority of them are, and I have to really make sure that they know I'm paying attention to the fact that they support me and I support them. So she says she realizes this around the Share My World album, which is also a very important album. I love that album cover. Ugh, just did it. She also brings into the conversation HIV AIDS and how it affected her songwriter friend, Kenny Green. You may know him from Love No Limits, My Love, come on, songs I'm sure you all love. And she talks about how nobody is talking about this. Everybody is silent while people are dropping off. So what does she do? She gets her good friend, Little Kim, does an ad for Mac, continues to use her voice with the Elton John Foundation to bring awareness to how HIV AIDS is disproportionately affecting the black community as well. Using her platform while not only she performed at the Super Bowl, but during the Super Bowl commercial, she was telling women to love themselves by making sure that they get checked out and get mammograms and bringing that into the conversation. <laughs> we stand a versatile queen. I can go back to like specific things and points in my life, even now that I'm feeling where I wake up and I'm like, Good morning, gorgeous. Listen, give myself grace for those things that happen. I'm still here for a reason. Again, I keep saying that because I'm also reminding myself of that all at the same time of, <laughs> of having to say good morning, gorgeous. And I'm enough and I'm worthy of love. And I'm, I'm going to get it for what I want in my life. So <laughs> thank y'all so much for just taking this time to allow me to stand the queen of hip hop soul. Mary J. Blige. I got the gummy smile. My cheeks hurt from smiling so much. Make sure you let me know. Do you have a connection? Do you have a story? How you feel about it? Has, is there a certain song in your life? Matter of fact, what's your favorite song of all time? Let's just make this difficult. What is your favorite song of all time from the Queen of Hip Hop Soul? If you're playing it right now with all the good vibes, until next time, always be good to yourself. I feel like it needs to like Mary bounce up out of here or something like that. I can't get up and kick. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later.